Hi, 8th grade. Welcome to Lesson 7-2, Understand the Converse of the Pythagorean Theorem. By the end of the lesson, I want you to be able to say, I can use the converse of the Pythagorean Theorem to identify right triangles. Let's solve and discuss it. Kyla has some straws that she will use for an art project. She wants to glue three of the straws onto a sheet of paper without overlapping to make the outline of a right triangle. Which three straws could Kyla use to make a right triangle? Explain. Well, let's pick three. Why don't we try six, seven, and twelve? Well, if it was six, seven, and twelve, remember the Pythagorean theorem works with right triangles. A squared plus B squared equals C squared. Six squared plus seven squared equals 12 squared. I needed to have 12 BC because it was the longest side. 6 squared is 36, plus 7 squared is 49, and 12 squared is 144. 36 plus 49 is equal to 85. And I bring down my 144. Does that work? No. So this is not a right triangle. Those three would not work. Let's try three other ones. What about three, four, and five? Well, okay, a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Three squared plus four squared equals five squared. Five had to be c. The other two could have been in a different order. Three squared is nine. Four squared is 16. Five squared is 25. 9 plus 16 is 25. Bring down the 25. That works. Yay! So this one is a right triangle. It's a right triangle, and we know that because of the Pythagorean theorem works for the side lengths. Focus on math practices. Could Kyla use the straws that form a right triangle to make a triangle that is not a right triangle? Explain. No. She could not because then they would need to be um, different side lengths. All right, um, example number one. Understand the converse of the Pythagorean theorem. Triangle ABC has side lengths A, B, and C such that A squared plus B squared equals C squared. Construct a logical argument to show that triangle ABC is a right triangle. So first they are drawing a right triangle with DEF, the leg lengths A, B, and C, and the hypotenuse length X. So the Pythagorean theorem, instead of C, we would just put x. Use substitution to know that c equals x. And solving it in, work backwards, you get x equals c. So the three sides of triangle DEF are congruent to the three sides of triangle ABC. So there is a sequence of transformations that maps the triangles onto one another. So this is proof of the converse of the Pythagorean theorem. So it's just proving that it works both ways. Um, remember, a proof is a mathematical argument that shows that something is true. Try it. A triangle has side lengths 4 inches, 5 inches, and 7 inches. Is the triangle a right triangle? Well, let's label our parts A, B, and C. I know this one has to be C because 7 is longest. And I can choose these to be A and B. So 4... 4 squared plus 5 squared equals 7 squared. 4 squared is 16. 5 squared is 25. And 7 squared is 49. Is a squared plus b squared equals a c squared? Is 16 plus 25? 16 plus 25 is 41. So is 41 equal to 49? No. a squared plus b squared is not equal to c squared. So is the triangle a right triangle? N-O. Explain the proof of the converse of the Pythagorean theorem in your own words. So, if the sum 
of the two smaller sides squared equals the larger side squared it is a right triangle so it's a way to check All right, example number two. Apply the converse of the Pythagorean theorem to identify right triangles. Is triangle XYZ a right triangle? So again, this has to be A, B, this one has to be C. Plug them in. 7 squared plus 24 squared equals 25 squared. 7 squared is 49. 24 squared is 576. And 25 squared is 625. 625 is equal to 625, so XYZ is a right triangle. B, the side lengths of a triangle are 6 inches, 4.5 inches, and 3.7 inches. Is this triangle a right triangle? Well, again, label our A, B, and C. 6 has to be C, and then we can make 4.5A and 3.7B. Plug it into the Pythagorean theorem. You end up solving and get 34.3125 is equal to 36. No dice. That does not work. This triangle is not a right triangle. Let's try it. A triangle has side lengths of 10 feet, square root of 205 feet, and square root of 105 feet. Is this triangle a right triangle? Explain. Well, before we can do that, we have to figure out which side is the longest. I know what 10 is, but I don't know off the top of my head what square root of 205 is. So I get my calculator. Remember, you hit that second x squared button. Square root of 205 is about 14.3. And then same way, square root, second, sec x squared, 105 is about 10.2. So that helps me label A, B, and C. So that means that 14.3 has to be C, 10 can be A, and 10.2 can be B. But when I go back to plug them into the equation, I'm going to use the square roots, and you'll see why in a second. So rewrite the formula. A squared plus B squared equals C squared. A is 10, so 10 squared, plus B is the square root of 105 squared equals C, the square root of 205 squared. So 10 squared is 100, 10 times 10, plus, now remember that the square root squared cancels each other out, so it's just 105. And same thing with this, the square root of 205 squared cancels each other out, and it's just 205. So we do 100 plus 105 is 205, which does equal 205. So yes, the Pythagorean theorem works. So it is a right triangle. Use the converse of the Pythagorean theorem to analyze shapes. Ray drew an isosceles triangle LMN and line segment LP. How can Ray tell whether the segment drawn is the height of the triangle? Well, a height of a triangle is perpendicular. Perpendicular means it has to have a right angle, making this triangle on the right a right triangle. So we can check those numbers, plug them in and see if they work. So a squared plus b squared equals c squared. We know 3.7 has to be c. That's the longest side. It's the one that's across from what would be the right angle. Then we can make 1.3 a and 3.5 b. Plugging them into the formula, we end up getting 13.94 is equal to 13.96, which is not true. Not true. Erase that right out of there. It is not a right angle, meaning it is not a right triangle, meaning segment LP, that line, is not the height of LMN, even though it looks like it. So please don't be tricked by pictures. Always check. A triangle is inside a trapezoid. Is the triangle a right triangle? Explain. Well, I know this one has to be C, because that's where the right angle would be if it is. Let's check. So that means C is across from it. 
Also, if you did the square root of 514, you would see that that is longer than both 15 and 17. So I can label this A and this B. Write out my formula, A squared plus B squared equals C squared. Plug in, substitute, 17 squared plus 15 squared equals 500, ooh, the square root of 514 squared. Get out my handy dandy calculator. 17 squared is just 17 times 17, which is 289. Plus 15 squared is 15 times 15, aka 225. And the square root of 514 squared, the square root and the squareds cancel out to give us 514. So we add 289 plus 225, and we get the lovely 514, which is equal to 514. So it checks out. Yes, it is a right triangle. The Pythagorean theorem works. All right, key concept. The converse of the Pythagorean theorem states that if the sum of the squares of the lengths of two sides of a triangle is equal to the square of the length of the third side, the triangle is a right triangle. So if the Pythagorean theorem, so basically if the Pythagorean theorem works, then it's a right triangle. If the Pythagorean theorem doesn't work, it's not a right triangle. All right, eighth grade, let's say it. I can use the converse of the Pythagorean theorem to identify right triangles. Have a great day.